Welcome back to the Justin Lee Collins Show. Now, if you're an international pop star, a Hollywood actor, or a top model, chances are you know my next guest personally. The rest of us have to make do with his music, which luckily is brilliant. Please welcome Mark Ronson and Daniel Merriweather. So mad. Oh, God, I love you. Mark Ronson and Daniel Merriweather, everybody. Oh, my God, Mark. You are so flipping hot, it's unbelievable. Uh, can I tell them about the text I got from you in the middle of the night? Uh, yes, you can. Ago. It's basically, I get this text from the middle of the night, it just says, <laughs> I want you, and then it has two X's, but I don't have your number, you don't really call me that much, so I'm thinking the mystery of this I want you text. Yeah. It was you or my mum. It was you. <laughs> <laughs> I do want you. Yeah. You're officially the best dressed man in the world. <laughs> you look pretty amazing. Do you think so? I think your hair looks even better since the guy with the glasses, since you got rid of him. You look oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, dead wood. <laughs> How did you two meet? Well, it was about six years ago, and I made a demo. And, uh, yeah, Mark heard it. I was in Australia making music, and he heard it, and you were DJing at the time, weren't you? Yeah, I heard his voice, and I thought he had one of the best voices I've ever heard, and like, I called him up in the middle of the night. I sent him a text first, he says, I want you. <laughs> and he called me back, he says, who is this? He's like, you don't know me, but I think you can sing good. And uh, I said, come to New York and let's work on some demos. And it kind of took a long time and I wasn't anyone at the time. And he took a leap of faith, stayed on my couch for three months. And we, uh, we got to the point where I uh, made my record stop me and now it's all his time. This was on version, of course. That was the first track that you worked on together, was we it? We actually worked on a She's Got Me as well, didn't we? Yeah, we worked on a track on my first, on my first album called She's Got Me. But 13 people bought that, so... Yeah, let's say <laughs> Stop Me for the sake. So on version, did you work with just the people that you wanted to work with, or did you have, like, a record company saying we'd like you to do a track with this person, that person? No, when I did version, um, I didn't have a record deal, so I was just getting my friends to do it and stuff. And I was, at the time, I was working on Lily's first record, Amy Winehouse, Back to Black, working with Daniel. So it was just really friends and mates, like, coming over. Was it Back to Black that, that really put you on the map? Uh, I, would, I would think so, yeah, definitely. And working with the Winehouse, of course. Working with the Winehouse. It's a phenomenal album. Yeah. Do you think we will ever hear anything as good as that from her ever again? Will she ever come close to it? I don't know. I don't think anyone was expecting that from her from the first record to the second record, so who knows? She might write 10 or 11 of the best songs of all time between now and whenever the next record is, but I don't know. I never... I think she's a pure, amazing talent for all the shit you read in the tabloids and everything else that goes on. When she sits down with a guitar and writes a song, she has a stellar talent. You've got a very cool place in New York. You have a... An eclectic jukebox. Yeah. But you would imagine that. You would imagine Mark Ronson to own a co and then a and I the fuck how did you say it? E etiquette? An eclectic jukebox. There's a lot of shit on this yeah. jukebox. <laughs> you have foreigner on your jukebox. Yeah. Which foreigner track do you have on your jukebox? I have um urgent. I remember you have waiting for a I girl. I definitely like you. have waiting for a girl like you. I think it's an A B side, but what made that especially stick in your mind? Well, because it's quite an interesting fact that your stepdad is foreigner. He was in the band Foreigner, yeah. What was he that still about? is? Um, there he is, there they are. Yeah, on the right. We moved to New York when I was eight because my mum married him and uh, we get to go out on tour and stuff and I saw that quite early on and I would stand behind the, the drum riser and just play drums, like, pretending like everyone was watching me like when I was, like, eight years old and just play air drums. It kind of makes sense that you're in a music business. I think so. Or a drug dealer. <laughs> Either <laughs> one. Either you know one. that as well? No. Did he use you as a stool pigeon? Probably. It was probably all of it was shoved in my bag as we're going through customs. Like, no one's going to search this. <laughs> swallow this. Yeah. Just swallow it as a sweet. Yeah. Uh, this is my mule. I mean, my son. <laughs> my son, Archie, yeah. was four last Saturday. Yeah. Do you know what I got him for his birthday? Drum kit. A drum kit. Yes. Um, 
that's that's a good one to get because kids love it. You know, a lot of kids get bored. You don't want to go like piano lesson, violin, but like banging on something is like heaven for it. You know, when you're four years old, so well, that's a good way to go. Heaven when you're four, but for me, it's driving me fucking crazy. Yes. <laughs> it's not fun. What was I thinking? I should have put them in the garage. Yeah. Do you think, Dan? What to live? <laughs> or just to play the drums? You recommended I put my son in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> He's four, Daniel. He's just four. I thought it. I thought it sounded a little harsh. No, definitely put the jump. Put the jump kid in the garage, and you won't hear as much noise. Dan. Yeah. Did they put you in the garage? When you... <laughs> no, they didn't. Dan. Yeah. Did they put you in the garage when you? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? I've never. You know what, Justin? I've never been put in the garage. <laughs> Who put you in there, Dan? <laughs> Two more times, he's going to break. <laughs> <laughs> I've almost got him. Yeah. You got, you got the... Do you, get, do you know Barbara Walters is over here? She's the one that always makes everyone cry before yeah. the Oscars. I've almost got him. You've almost got her hair. <laughs> what do I...? <laughs> your, your, your hair is, like, really it's a, something. It's I told you. A, a, a I feel like it has... Somehow, it's a living organism. <laughs> Is it, do you take it off at night? <laughs> Bear Grylls might try and eat it. No, I actually Probably said, would. all jokes aside, it's, it's an amazing hairstyle, it and amazing. it's what I aspire sort of to do. Like, you want to kind of have a thing that no one else has, and nobody's got Saying that. this is my thing. Daniel. Yes. Is this man... I think he's a lovely man. Great guy. We've spent some time together. Mm hmm But is he difficult to work with? I don't have to work with him. You have to work with him. At times. I mean, I think if you work closely with anyone, it can be... You know, for a long period of time, it can get... You know, naked. there's definitely tension. Did you get naked? He has before. I he just took do. off his he's, shirt. He's not coming around to it yet. It's weird. <laughs> what, is, what is wrong? Why do you want to get naked? I don't know. Huh? It's, it's, a, it's a gradual process, I think. Dan? Yeah. Were you naked Maybe in the second. garage? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't naked. I was never in the garage. <laughs> it's been a pleasure to have you both on. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Um, Dan? How dark was it in the garage? <laughs> it was pretty dark. I've got him! <laughs> he broke. I've got him. I've got him in the end. You're the closer. Thank you. I closed that. I closed it. I closed it. Dan, would you sing out the show with me? What are we going to sing? Begging. Done. <laughs>